So in this series we're going to create a new database using Access 2016. Depend on what version you're using, these screens may be somewhat different, but most of the functionality should be there. So in Access 2016, when you first open a new project, you are given a variety of templates. We're just going to click on Blank Desktop Database. We're going to change the name to DB Tutor. And we're going to accept the default location and click on create. When you open a new database, it opens to a default table. Just click on the X in the upper right corner to close that out. Let's just take a moment to look at the interface. So at the top, you have several tabs, and each tab has different tools. This is referred to as the ribbon. On the left side, you have a listing of all of the objects within the database. So databases store information what's known as tables. Tables are really the heart of the database. That is the repository of data. That is where you store the information that you're trying to retrieve and track and report on. Databases can have many different tables. Those tables can be linked. And we're going to look at how to do that a little bit in this video. So let's go ahead and create our first table. So we want to click on Create and we're going to click on table and it looks pretty much what we're just looking at so we want to actually design this and not just accept what they've given us so at view click on the down arrow and choose design view it's going to ask you to name this let's call this since we're going to use several different tables we don't want to use just main table because in a uh, a real company you're going to have various tables that store various types of information so let's call this ticket tracker and we'll append the word table and go ahead and click on OK so now you're in, as we said, design view. This little symbol here, it's known as primary key. We're not going to get into that right now. The way you toggle it on and off is with this button, so we're just going to shut that off for now. So you have two columns, field name. So the field name would be something like customer first name, customer last name, uh, ticket number, things like that. The data type is how is this formatted? If you've used Excel, you'll be familiar with how a column in Excel has, uh, it can be formatted as text, can be formatted as date, can be formatted as number, very similar. So uh, the, the, it's a good comparison to compare an access table to um, an Excel spreadsheet because they functionally are very similar. There's differences but if, it gives you a basic idea of what a table is. It's basically a spreadsheet. So let's start with case number as the field name because it's going to be a ticket tracker case management database. And the data type is auto number. So that's fine. So that's going to start with one, two, three, four. Now we're going to add a few more fields. So let's say customer F name. And this will be short text. Depending on what version of access, you might not have an option that says short text. It might just say text. Because in earlier versions, there was, sh there was text and then there was memo. Text allowed for 255 characters, memo allowed for a much larger amount. I'm presuming that for consistency, they got rid of those two terminologies and now you just have short text and long text. So we'll choose short text. Let's now use customer L name. This will also be short text. Now we'll put in associate name. We'll just use a full name there. And then we'll have 
incident date and this will be date time and then we will let's just capitalize that to be consistent then we will have um, incident details so this will be the actual description of what's going on we'll have that be long text now depending on what you're doing you might have the entire description in this one field uh, some ticket trackers may have two fields one for the uh, problem and then one for the resolution so let's do that that will also be a long text and then we will do um, ticket or oh, actually we use the word case so we'll call this case status and I'm just trying to be consistent since we said it's a case number then we should really talk about case status rather than calling it ticket status likewise uh, these are the incidents so incident date incident details incident resolution and that should about do it so let's go ahead and click on save so it saves the format and then click on the down arrow and go back to data sheet view now you can't really read the names because the columns are too narrow so if you point at the column you can then click and expand the width of the column and whenever you make a change like this this is considered a layout change so uh, access will prompt you to save so once I've made these changes we'll go ahead and save again now you're actually free to enter information here so let's just quickly put in some information and to go from field to field I'm tabbing let's widen this one a little bit more because it's a date it prompts you with a calendar is in details and there you go you have now entered a record into your database a couple things to point out one this really isn't a great way to enter using um, the data sheet view we're going to talk in another video about a better way to enter data but I really want to look at the format of the data in this one so a few things incident date if the incident date is always the current date then you really shouldn't prompt for a calendar you really should have this be a fixed field likewise status you probably only have a few statuses closed open escalated so you really don't want this meanly typed in because if you're running reports and someone misspells the word it's not going to come up on your report like say you're looking for all open cases and someone types O-P-N-E they misspell it and you're searching for the word open it won't find it so let's go back to design view and we'll make some changes so for incident date so when you highlight a field down at the bottom here you actually have some attributes that you can work with default value is the one we care about for this so if you type date with an open and closed parenthesis after it that will populate it with the current date for case status we don't want a default value per se but what we do is we want a selection so if you click on the data type and there's a lookup wizard you're going to get a prompt I want the lookup field to get the values from another table we'll look at that in a minute or I will type in the values that I want we'll do that one 
In this case, we don't expect the statuses to change in the long term. Closed, open, escalated, really no reason to link it to a table. The reason why you'd link to another table is if you're expecting um, these values to change. And, and we'll look at why values would change. So let's do open. Um, escalated and closed. Again, you get more values. This is just meant to be demonstrative. So we'll click on next. Do you want to limit entries to the choices? Yes, limit to the list. Do you want to store multiple values for this lookup? No. We want these to be mutually exclusive. And then we click on finish. So go ahead and save go back to datasheet view and you're going to notice a few things. First of all, the date is now pre-populating. Second of all, if you try to do the status, you now have a drop-down box with your choices. So, so far so good. Associate name. You really don't want people to be able to invent associates. So you want to pull that in. But, unlike the case status, depending on the size of your organization, your associate names may be coming and going, particularly if you're in a larger organization. So let's create a new table. So let's go to create table. We'll go to design view, and this will be employee dir for directory. Get rid of primary key. And this is going to be EMP name. We'll just use a, a single name rather than first and last. We'll make this a short text. EMP ID. We'll also make this a short text. So even though employee IDs may be numbers, you really don't want to manipulate it. You don't want to calculate it. And if there's like leading zeros, you don't want the zeros to be dropped off. So even if you plan on having numbers for an ID, you really want to treat it like text. And we'll save that. Let's go back to data sheet view. And we're just going to do a little manual data entry just like we did in the other table. So. For consistency, I'm going to go back and change these to lower cases. All right, we'll stop there for now. We'll save that again. You don't need to save when you enter data because as soon as you put data in a field, that's it. It's been it's been stored in the database. But I widened the columns, so that is a layout change, and so that would require me uh, to save it. So let's go ahead and close that one. Now, keep in mind that when you close it, it doesn't delete it. The only reason why that first database deleted is because uh, that first table, excuse me, deleted was because it was a default table and there was nothing stored in it. No fields were saved. So, with that new table saved, we can now link the two together. So, go to Design View for Associate Name, choose Lookup Wizard. Just like we saw last time, except this time we want the top choice where it reads, I want the lookup field to get the values from another table. Employee directory is already selected. Push over employee name. And we'll have this sorted by employee name. Shows the current list. We don't want multiple values, so we'll leave that blank. You get a prompt to save the table. Click on save. Now let's go back to the datasheet view. So if we try to create a new ticket, okay, a new record, when we come to associate name, we now have a drop down box just like this one over here. But whereas this one is manually entered and can be manually changed, this one actually 
is uh, linked to another table, so we'd have to go out to that other table to change it. Now, because I use so few examples, um, it might not seem like a big deal, but when you start linking associate name to three, four, or ten, or fifteen different tables, you would have to go to each and every one of those tables and change the list if you didn't link it like this. So because it's linked, then any time this is changed, then any table that is linked to it, uh, it will also change. So right now, because it's only one table, it looks like it'd be a wash either way. But uh, once you start linking that employee directory out to multiple tables, then it really does make a difference.